Okay, today I'm going to show how to create the um, Jace 2.0 head. And what we're doing is we're taking the original Jace character and creating the side, three-quarter left, front, three-quarter right, and right side view. And we're combining them all under a switch layer and then allowing you to have the ability to use a smart bone to turn the head between the different views. The key points that I'll be talking about is that this approach allows a smooth head turn and clear manipulation of features in the front and three-quarter view. The approach is most helpful if you have pre-existing views and you just want to add some subtle head movements for yes, no type of movements. It's also very helpful if you're having some difficulty getting um, more than one smart bone to work together, such as the um, head turn and the up and down movement, or blink. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk about creating a head turn that smoothly connects to a three-quarter view. But that's really not necessary. Um, that's just something that you can do. Animation techniques can cover any disjuncture that you have. Now, if you really want that smooth connection, the best way to do that is to hand draw out the three-quarter views first. Finally, the last thing that I want to say is that this is just one approach. There are many different approaches that you can use for animation, and this is just one that I found helpful and hope it's helpful to you. Before I talk too much about how to create the head for Jace 2.0, let me show you why I even consider this. So here's the character that I created just using the smart bones. You can see as I move the head turn, I can do the left and right head turn. I can uh, have a smart bone for his blink. Notice he can close his eyes and go to surprised kind of view. I have eyebrows that can go angry looking to sad or surprised. And I have an up, up and down head movement. And all of that seems to look okay. However, watch what happens if I go to the head turn, the three-quarter view, and now I try to do an up-down head movement. Well, that doesn't seem to work right at all. How about the eyebrows? Those seem to work okay. Um, not too bad. I, it took a little work, but notice that they kind of look a little bit strange. And then if I zoom in on the blink, we can see that when I blink here, that looks okay, but actually it's not fully closed. And I, it, it, let me show you. In the, when I look at it the front position and I move it all the way till it's closed, now if I turn the head, those eyes aren't closed exactly. Now the reason for this is because when I'm doing the head turn, I'm not actually looking at the blank. When I look at the blank, the head's turned in a different direction. Now I can try to go back and forth between these different bones, but it's a difficult thing to do. Now, as we said, the uh, head up and down really shows the problem, but what I'm trying to show here is that even things as simple as eye blinks can be a problem, and that's because I'm moving points, um, not just uh, horizontally, but also sometimes a little vertically. Now, with a lot of trial and error, I can get it to look pretty good. But if you think about it just a second, if I had this three-quarter view, um, I could then use the smart bone to adjust this layer exactly for the blink and the head up and down. So the reason for combining the different uh, three-quarter view, front view, um, with the smart bone is that um, when I'm in the front view, I can be adjusting the blink for the front view but then I can also use that same smart bone to adjust how it looks in the three-quarter view. Now, if you haven't done too much with smart bones, uh, that could be a bit confusing. Um, if it is, my suggestion is just uh, get in there and try it some. Try to uh, combine multiple bones, such as the um, horizontal head turn and the up and down movement, as well as blinks and eyebrow movements, and you'll start to see some of the challenges that you have. So my answer for dealing with that is to, um, in the front view, 
use the normal uh, smartphone controlled head movement or head turn to a certain frame. In this case we happen to be on frame 17. And then in the very next frame, if you'll take a look, we've actually switched to the three-quarter view. So in frame 17, we're in the front view, and in the next frame, we're in the three-quarter view. And if you look, I can see there's a switch layer. And then as I keep going, but then I switch to the side view. Okay, so let's go ahead and explain how I do this. Okay, so from the new window, we just want to load up all the Jace characters, or the, the views of Jace. Now when the character comes up, you can load all of them. Um, I'm not going to load the back. I'm only going to talk about the three-quarter uh, side and front, but you could use the back if you wanted as well. Now the layer one is what was created when I created a new um, project. I'm just going to delete that because I don't need it. And then I'm going to select all of the um, bodies, the different positions, and select Group with Selection. Now, if you have an earlier version of Anime Studio, you don't have to, ha you won't have the Group with Selection, but you can just pull them underneath the switch layer. So I'm going to Group with Selection, name that body, and then turn that into a switch layer. Now I'm not going to focus on the body today, but that's how I did it. The next thing that I'll do is open up the front view. I'll move the head uh, vector layer up by the eyes and the mouth, select them, and then group with selection. And now I'm going to call that front. I'm now going to move that outside of the body. I'm not going to worry about the position of the head right now. I'm just going to close that front. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing with the Jace 45 and the Jace side. So what I have is three groups, front, left 45 because the face is facing to the left, and then right side because the face is facing to the right. Now I'm going to select front through the right side and again do a group with selection, call that head, and then convert it to a switch layer. Now the next thing I'm going to do is close the head and the body, select them both, and again, group with selection. Got to love that uh, approach here. And so now I'm going to check call that Jace 2.0. And I will convert that into a bone layer this time. Because what we'll do is we're not going to switch between the head and the body. We're going to combine them and use some bones to control the head movement. Now we see that the body is way off of the uh, the head is way off of the body. I'm not actually going to drag the head over yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open that up and go to the front view and I'm going to click on the set origin. And then what I will do is click underneath the chin. That's because as I rotate the head left and right, I'd like it to rotate around that chin. So I'm then going to click on the layer, the transform layer, and move it so that it's positioned on the body appropriately. I'm going to then do the same thing for the left 45. And the right side. Now notice as I set the origin of the right side, I'm going to set it where uh, basically his spinal column would connect, you know, where his neck uh, attaches. Now the next thing that I want to do is make sure that all the heads are uh, sized and aligned properly. And to do that, I might want to have uh, a reference layer. And so I create a, a vector layer, layer two, that has uh, lines on it through the center and the tops of the and bottom of the head. Now for the Jace character, uh, the very top of his hair is a, a nice reference. So I added a line there to help with uh, sizing of the head. So now I can just go to the head layer and switch between the different views and see what it looks like. The next thing I'm going to do is duplicate both the left 45 and the right side view so that I've got left and right views um, to the three-quarter and side. 
Now, let's take a look at the right 45. Um, Jace, in the original characters, they called them 45. Uh, I like the 3-4 quarter, three for 3-quarter, but I'm just going to leave it as 45 because that's what was originally there. But an interesting point that I want to show is, now that I've got the head where I like it, I want to change the origin just a little bit. So I'm going to click on that origin, set the origin, and put it right at that intersection. What that allows me to do now is, as you see, this right 45 is a duplicate of left 45. I could have used reference layers, but I just went ahead and did a duplicate. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this layer right here. Flipped it horizontally. So now we have a right and left facing Jay's character. I'll do the same kind of thing with the right side and then organize the layers appropriately. So now we have um, a switch layer that controls a view that's left side, left 45, front, right 45, and right. Now if you'll note, if I go from front to the 45 degree angles, you'll see he starts looking down. Now what this means is that Jace, when he was originally constructed, was not designed for a horizontal head turn. So we've got some choices that we need to make. I could make the front um, turn down as it goes left or right, but that's kind of the opposite of normal animation in the head turn. It's usually lowest in the middle, so I could actually take the front view and modify it so he's looking down a little bit, or another alternative is the one that I chose to do, which is to modify the right and the left views so that they match more closely the front. So my head turn is going to go from 145 to the other 45 passing through the front view and I want it to look smooth. For the left and the right side I'm not going to actually have the head turn smoothly there um, because usually the head doesn't uh, just smoothly turn all the way to, from the 45 to the left or right side. You could do that if you want, but you're going to have to take into account a lot of things like making the eyes disappear. And you can do that. There's techniques that show how to do that, but I think it's uh, more trouble than it's worth. So when we go from a 45 degree angle to the uh, side view, we'll just have the smart bone just switch the layers. Okay, now before I begin my work, what I'm going to do is make sure that the expression, the default expression, and uh, the mouth are the same between the 45 degree views and the front view. So I'm going to, I, I kind of like the uh, 45 degree view a little bit better, so I'm going to choose the mouth for the front that matches that and the expression of the eyes. So for the front view, we're just going to set the mouth to AI and set the eyes to open. And I'll go ahead and set the uh, head to default to the front view. Now I'm going to go to the bone layer and I'm going to add a bone for the head turn. So I just uh, select a add bone and I'll call that head turn and turn that into a smart bone dial. Um, you could make it 90 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and make mine 45 and I like to choose 96 since I tend to use 24 frames per second. Now to make the process of the head turn easy, what I'm going to do is go to um, File, Preview, and preview the left and right views. So I'll just save as PNG and then save it as uh, whichever view, left and right view. Once I've saved that, I go above the bone layer and I go File, Import, Image. And so I can Im import the left 45 and right 45 views. Now, since I haven't moved the character or anything, that uh, image lies right on top of where I want it to be. To show that, let me hide the right 45 and set the head to left 45 and it looks like that character is uh, exactly where it should be. Let's click on left 45 PNG, click on the ellipsis and set opacity to 60 
and say OK. And now it looks like nothing has happened, but let me go to the head and change it to front. Now you can see that we actually had that aligned extremely well, and that's why it looked like nothing had happened. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail on the head turns. Um, you can see any number of tutorials about the head turns, but I will uh, point out a couple of things. If you want your character to do both the head turns horizontally and up and down, then it's important in the head turn to really try to move the points only horizontally for the horizontal head turn and vertically for the up and down movement. That way you don't get uh, mixing um, inappropriately. So that's the best approach. It still won't be very perfect uh, if you're looking down into the right or up into the right or something like that, um, but that's how you can get the best approach. Things like hair, uh, which are more uh, just malleable or amorphous, they don't matter as much, but the outline of the head and the eyes and mouth, that's pretty important. Okay, so now we're actually going to talk about the head turn itself. And so I'm going to do the head turn to the left and select the image that uh, has the left three-quarter facing image. And remember I set that to uh, an opacity of 60%. And what I want to do is double click on head turn and make sure that I place the um, timeline marker at 96, which is the full turn to the left and now I'm going to go to the front facing view and select the head layer. And so now that selects all the points and what I'm going to do is one by one um, move the points over in a position uh, that makes it look like a three quarter view. Um, now because uh, Jace really wasn't drawn to be uh, a horizontal head turn, uh, his face turns down, I'm not going to actually try to match point to point. Um, and let's look at an example of this. I'm going to select the um, point select tool and click on the background so that none of the points are selected. Now I'm going to select the transform points tool and I'm going to take this center point because it's an easy one to see where it should go. I'm going to grab that, press the shift key and drag it over so it's right above where that uh, his uh, point of his hair goes. Now I'm going to make the other points just kind of move with respect to that. They don't have to be perfect. Um, it's up to you how you want to make it look. Another good example is the nose. I'm going to select all of those nose points. Oops, let's try that again. Select those points. Select the transform tool. Press shift and drag them over. Now another thing I want to do is I'm going to uh, squeeze them together a little bit so that it looks like a little bit of perspective. But again, as I move my points, I'm going to move them horizontally. Um, that's what we want to do with this head turn. The other thing you want to be aware of is that since his head is uh, round, um, there may be some points that are actually going to go backwards um, because they're toward the back of his head and so they'll start to go behind once they've you know, gone out as far as they can. So you'll just move the points uh, however makes sense to you. This is all the artistic part of um, the animation here. The other thing that I've noticed in doing this kind of thing is that even if they're not going to move much, moving these points just a little bit gives you that appearance of um, his head turning because even if they don't move much, the little bit of movement is noticeable. Now as you're doing that head turn, you should take your timeline uh, marker and move it back and forth so you can kind of see what that looks like. And as I do that here, I see that the right side of his ear and his hair needs to be moving. So you just do it a little bit at a time till you get it to be moving the way you think. As I look at his left ear, that looks pretty good, but his right ear, or his left ear to our right, needs to change some. Now I'm going to zoom in and as you're doing this what you may notice is that there may be lines that aren't there such as for example his nose has a line that comes up here that doesn't exist in the front view so what you may want to do is create those lines so that they can start to show up. 
another thing that you may want to think about is hair is can kind of go just wherever you want it to go um, so that it looks nice and fun. Uh, it's that facial outline is the most important to get in the right position. The hair can go just about however you want. But if you're trying to do like I do here, which is have the front, left, and right switch layers, then you want the hair to align properly. But the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to use the front view. I'm just using the three-quarter uh, image to show basically where things should be, and then I'll adjust the um, three-quarter layer to match that. Okay, now I'm going to stop that part and go to the eyes. And what I'm going to do here, uh, let me actually show the mouth. And what I'm going to do here is actually select the center of the mouth uh, with the set the origin. That will allow me to then uh, drag the mouth, and that really includes all of the switch layers to the place it should be. And I'm actually going to shrink it some to make it look like uh, some perspective. And you can actually even use the perspective uh, tools. Now, one tip is, if you're going to use the perspective tools, I strongly encourage you do it on the group layer and not on the individual layers. If you play around with it, what you'll start to see is if I do the perspective on the individual layers, it'll start moving points in ways that are hard to control. Once I've moved the mouth where I think it should be, I can click on the uh, individual switch layers to see if they look like they're in the right position and make a little adjustments if I need to. Just make sure that your time uh, pointer is, is staying at the frame 96, which is uh, fully all the way over turned left. Now I'll do the same thing for the eyes, you know, setting the origin into the middle of the eyes, and then transform the, the eyes. Again, I'm going to only move them horizontally. I will uh, pull them in to give that little bit of perspective look but I'm not going to move them vertically because I'm going to use uh, another bone to do the up and down movement, so that's why I'm only going to do horizontally. So what you should have at that point is um, the head that does turn left and right. You see it turning to the left here. Actually, not to the right. We've only done the left turn. Uh, we see that happening, um, but we may um, need to do uh, tweaks so that when we, with a three-quarter view. Now, if I want to add that line for the nose, which is what I really need to do, I'm going to go back to the main line, bring up the head, select the Add Point to tool. Now make sure I'm on frame zero, and I'm going to add a couple of points in there. What I'll want to do is also then go in and put the um, stroke on and make sure the color is right. And I'm actually going to add a symmetrical one on the other side because remember his head's going to turn to the right in another time so when he's facing front all of these will be uh, the width will be zero um, and then the width increases it goes to the other side so what I'll do for this nose side I've turned off the uh, reference image and I've used the eyedropper and select the edge here to get the colors correct then I'm going to select the create um, shape tool, make sure we've only selected stroke, and then create that shape. And I'm going to do the same with the other side. Then what I'll do is I'll select all of the points and set the width and turn the width down to zero for that. That way the nose doesn't show up in the front view. And as I do the head turn, as I move it over I'll have to move those points to match the head. The other point that I would suggest is that you should make on the smartphone tools uh, or the smartphone actions, you should make all those points linear. Um, that's because the smartphone itself is moving linearly and that makes it move uh, like you'd expect. And so as it goes to the right, or as I move the timeline uh, to the right, we can see that his, uh, that line shows up. Okay, now I've switched over to my Jace 2.0 that I've already completed, and in this one I didn't do, use 96 frames, I only used 48. And it's actually at the 3 quarter was at 36, uh, 3 fourths of the way, and then I switched to the side view. 
But let's take a look at uh, what happens and what I did here. Okay, the first thing I want to show is I'm going to go to the head switch layer. And now you can see that at frame 18 is where I switch between the front and three quarter view. But you can't really even tell that. It becomes blurry because it changes uh, the switch layer. But if we take a look over here, we can see that between here, we're actually switching between those different switch layers. And then we switch to the side view right here. Now, as I said before, I don't actually um, make that smooth here because I don't think it's needed, but you could do that. Okay, so let me go to the front view and look just before I switch to, to the layer at the very last position. That's where I've moved all the points. Now let me go one more uh, frame over and things are going to stay the same in the um, front view. But let me just compare that to the three-quarter view. And you'll notice it looks very, very close, but not exactly the same. Um, now you could actually, there's no reason that you couldn't actually um, create this over in the three-quarter view just by copying the points. You can do that if you want. Um, but notice things like the ear has to come uh, in position. And over here on the three-quarter view, I don't have the second line. Um, and then the other ear goes behind. So really all you have to do is get it very close and then you really can't tell much in you're actually doing the animation. And so what I would uh, spend a bunch of time doing is going between the different views of say the eyes open um, in the three-quarter view and um, the front view and make sure that those points look very similar. And that takes a little bit of time and effort to do that. Uh, but that's what gives you the very smooth transition. Okay, now I want to show some hints and uh, tricks to make it easier to actually do the construction and all the head turns and things like that. So to try to make it a little easier to understand, I have a front view, a simplified version of the front view of Jace's head, and a simplified version of the three-quarter view. Now, if you remember, we talked about the reference layer, so I'm going to bring one of those up. Now, we move these heads into positions from the original Jake character, um, but let me show you something uh, that you can actually work with this better for some uh, tricks or hints. So the first thing that you want to do is look at the layer and check up here for the position. Notice that the position and the scale and the angle are all uh, set to 0 or 1 for the scale. And I click on the group layer for the front view and it's also the same. And then for the regular head layer for the three-quarter view it's okay. And that means that none of those are out of position. But for the three-quarter head notice that the position is off. And so if I click on the reset or the scale now the head's kind of moved way out of position. Now for the simple view, to just bring everything all together, we move the folder. But here what we're going to do is instead of moving the layer, what we're going to do is go to the head and actually select all the points and then transform those points just by moving it in. Now we'll zoom in and resize what we're actually resizing and moving is the points and not the layers. Now setting um, these uh, layer positions to be 0 for the position angle and 1 for the scale uh, allows us to copy points between the different layers or specifically the keyframes. So let's show what I mean by this. So I have the head and in the three-quarter view, that's the position I want to move to. So what I'm going to do is move off of that frame and select all of the points in the head layer. Now I'm going to select the Transform Point tool and just click on the background. That's going to create a keyframe. Now I can just go there and Control c for Copy. Now what I'm going to do is go to my Head Turn action and 
in this case, let's go to frame 17, and that's where I want to have the head layer match the three-quarter layer. So all I need to do there is press Control V and paste that keyframe right in the action. And what we see is the head will rotate from that front view to the three-quarter view. Now that works because we have the same set of points uh, between those two layers and the layers, uh, group layers, have their positions set properly. Now again, what we would do then is go to the next frame and then go to the head switch layer and switch that to the three-quarter view. Now don't forget in the main view at frame zero we want it to be by default the front so we switch back to that. The end result of that is as I do the head turn, um, selecting the ma manipulate bone, the head turns and it you can't even tell that it's switching between the front and the three-quarter view. So let me show one last thing. Let's look at the uh, eyebrows. So for that action, uh, in frame 48, let's say that we want to have the angry kind of looking eyebrows. So I'm going to just transform the inner points to have the front view have kind of an angry view. Now, I'll, since I'm using the switch layers, I also want to go to the head uh, position in the three-quarter view and make those eyebrows look angry. And because I have that switch layer, I can make it uh, look very nice for that three-quarter view. So the point is that the head turn bone is not going to be affecting any of these points. It's just going to be the eyebrow uh, smart bone. Now all I did was uh, set it to look angry for both the um, three-quarter view and the front view. Now if I come and actually manipulate the eyebrows in the front view and I go straight to the head turn, it looks pretty good. Now you may see a little tiny bit of popping. If I go very slowly, you'll see that's a little bit of popping. Um, and that's something that you can tweak a little bit uh, there. But the point is, once I'm in the three-quarter view, I can now manipulate that three-quarter view with whatever fidelity that I need. Now I can make that uh, transition point a little easier and let me show you how do I do that. The main way that I can do that is, is by uh, preparing the um, reference layers and the, all the images to make sure that I keep things moving horizontally and everything. But I can also go into the eyebrow action and uh, move to that angry position. And I can actually go and turn the head bone and see to the point where, it, where that pops. So what I would want to do is that just before I, that pop happens, that's where that switch layer is occurring, then I would go to the head and I can transform that eyebrow down a little bit more. So here I'm manipulating the eyebrow action, and I can also do the inverse by uh, manipulating the head turn action. But you have to be kind of careful with that because um, it gets very complicated. And the last thing that you want to make sure is, since I'm in the eyebrow action, I don't really want to have the head turn bone moving. So I want to go in and select that keyframe, make sure that I've deleted that keyframe so that the head turn bone is not moving. So actually manip manipulating the multiple bones in the uh, smart bone action is a very advanced and complex kind of thing, but I just wanted to show you that you actually can do that. Well, that's the hints and tips that I have. Uh, it is uh, complicated thing, but hopefully uh, some of that's helpful ideas for you.